Hello again, everyone. It's Bob Martin, the RC Sub Guy, here with Jason and Logan. And it's Friday, uh, June 2nd, I think, right? Um, end of the week, and time to let you guys know what we have been up to. All right, what do we got going on here? This is us going back to the roots of Nautilus dry docks. This is your classic static display Nautilus from 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea. Our plans for this are pretty simple. We've got a spinning prop. We're going to get some lights in here. I think we've already shown off a fun little hatch that we're going to get used as a way to hide the switch to activate the lights and everything. We're going to have the salon. We're going to have the helm with full functionality. Uh, gonna get some repairs done because we've got a couple cracks going on in this, but this is a fun return to the classic thing that kind of started the Nautilus Redox. Yeah, yep, yeah, no salon interior, but we're gonna have a like an iris here. Oh, yeah, sorry, a non functioning iris. iris. It'll be closed off. Yeah, really cool. Get it painted up, make it look super awesome. Not a huge project for us, but one that is near and dear to our hearts. And here is one that uh, I am working on almost exclusively. This is Arathus. I showed you guys like the functional dive planes and all of that before. The cylinder is installed. Everything is functional. Um, but what I am working on right now are all of the deck details. You can see I've been scribing the uh, hull here for all of the different panel lines and that kind of thing. But this is going to be not just scribed. But it's going to be three-dimensional. I've, I've 3D printed in this uh, high-definition resin um, detail pieces. So this is all going to get machined down. And these will be impressed into the hull. Um, you got, you know, things like little hatches and, and that kind of stuff. And all the cleats and bollards and all of that fun stuff as well. So it'll be a really neat kind of three-dimensionally looking deal. I'm going to try and see if I can machine in the uh, groove for the safety rail that could be kind of fun but we'll see how it goes coming along this will be done by the end of the month we got to make sure it's done by the end of the month uh it's been a long journey unique boat very unique and what is this we've had a lot of people asking about this yeah this is bruce as we call him or the shark from jaws so I don't think a heck of a lot has really changed in terms of its frame since last time we showed him off or last time he made his little sneak intro. But we've got some fiberglass on him, uh, repaired a couple bumps on him, filled in everything, uh, sanded it all back down so he's nice and smooth. So essentially we've made him, we shaped him, now we're just bulking him up and... Uh... Yeah, so this was all 3D printed in PLA plastic which is not the strongest material um, but it was the most cost effective to print such a huge boat in um, and we're going to give it strength by uh, layering four ounce fiberglass over the whole thing so it's going to be bulletproof um, this is still wet and curing um, but we'll finish that all out sand it smooth it make it look super awesome um, the customer sent us some thrusters i think we put those away somewhere no, they're in the Table over here. Yeah, pull pull those out. Uh, I talked some sense into him. Um, he is of what the opinion, as most people are, that more is more. More power. More power. <laughs> like a friggin' six inch diameter thruster. These these we looked them up. I mean, these are for propelling like canoes. Um, a single one for a canoe. This is two. So you can see how huge, like just ridiculously huge they would be on the side of that shark. So and these are, I think, 110 millimeter, and he's got some 70 mils after I talked to him uh, coming. That's going to be like way, way better. I mean, this would be interesting. This thing would hydroplane, leap, leap out of the water, scare the bejesus out of people. But um, it's 24 volts and it required huge monstrous electronic speed controllers it's just it was just too much for for this particular project so yeah we talked talked him down i think it'll it, it'll be much much better with the smaller thrusters it'll look way better more realistic and easier to control and all that fun stuff no no i've got that actually i've got that big oh no it's 48 volts never mind yeah so that's brucey coming along nicely 
um, hiding right next to it. Uh, some of you may recognize this boat. Um, I talked about this in my newsletter that I sent out this morning. This is uh, Astute, a British submarine. Um, namely, actually, this is the HMS Audacious, as it is rendered. This came back to us from the customer who had us trim it out a few weeks ago, uh, you'll remember, uh, from Australia. So um, he was, was uh, moving some assets around and asked me if I'd like this. And, uh, of course, I said yes, because it's super cool. Um, so this is uh, in final stages. We're just, we're just going through it, making sure it's all 100% after its long journey, um, making a few little touch-ups and stuff like that. And uh, I believe this is spoken for. So unfortunately, if this is something you're interested in, I think it's already been uh, spoken for. We'll know for sure next week. Um, if it's not, it'll be up on the site and uh, you'll have your crack at it. Um, today's Friday, so we've played with something a little bit different just to relax our brains uh, slightly. This, you guys have seen before. This is the Dreadnought um, HMS Superb from World War I. Um, amazing details. This came out of the uh, the UK and uh, ended up uh, for with a really good customer of ours out of Florida. And um, I'm going to be bringing with with us to Subfest and be running around there. But today we rigged up all of the guns on swivels and we got smoke going. But we'll demonstrate some of the uh, the features here. Power that sucker up. There we go. You can see the functional smoke working, smoking up the shop as usual. All of the central guns are on the same channel and then the two side guns are on uh, channel as well. And uh, something neat that we did with this boat, the um, port and starboard props are on separate channels. That thing is going to go. Uh, so in, in theory, you should be able to maneuver this around in circles in its own body length kind of thing with that differential thrust. We'll see how it works in practical application. Um, you know, they're not overly close together along the center line, but uh, it's a long boat. It's a big boat, so it may not turn on a dime, so to speak. Certainly can't hurt anything. Oh, there's a lot of smoke in here. <laughs> uh, yeah, good stuff. Um, what else did we do? We did uh, 212 kits. The last of the kit kits got shipped out. We have... Um, Jason has already started the two um, RTR boats that we have left to do. So all the cylinders are done. We just got to put the model together. Just. That's our favorite term. Just. Um, we shipped out the flying sub kits. Uh, I think six of those. Yep. This week. Um, and we did a short video. So if you do have one of those kits or you just want to know more about them, uh, we did a little overview of the cylinders that are going out. So that's on my channel. You can check that out. Um, I think that's pretty well it. Uh, it was a busy week, as it always is. Um, tomorrow, or tomorrow, next week, um, I think we'll be able to finish up Nautilus. And I'm hoping Arethus will be at the point where we may be looking at paint. Well, trimming, anyway. You're supposed to paint it after you trim it, after you run it. Um, chapter three of the 212 video should be out this weekend, if not early next week. So chapter one and two are already out. Um, three will be coming out next week. Anything else? You need a safety tip. Don't run with scissors. Yeah, don't drop scissors on your toes. <laughs> don't use compressed air with molten solder. Uh -oh. Yeah. Yeah, it happens. Uh, be careful. Yeah. So with that, um, I think we can let everybody go. Everyone have a wonderful weekend. We're into June already. That's pretty awesome. Yeah, into hot summer temperatures here. We're 
I think it was 103 when we went for lunch in the yeah, car. Yeah, gonna be toasty. Toasty, toasty. Can't wait. <laughs> All right, everyone, um, you guys have a great weekend. And uh, as always, we will catch you next time.